Joining us now is Peter Cicchini of Axonic Capital and Ed Clissold of Ned Davis Research. Good afternoon, guys. Ed, after bumping around sideways to down, the s and is about back where we started the week. So since you expect choppiness for about the next half year, should investors buy beaten up defensives here? I think as we get closer to year end, that could be the case. We probably have a few more weeks of window dressing, of uh, selling uh, for tax loss purposes. So maybe the momentum trade can work for a little while longer. But as we move into 2024, uh, you can get that January effect where, so where, where the last year's losers gain momentum again. But more importantly, we could just get a choppier market overall. First half of election years tend to be weak. We expect the economy to slow. We don't think there's necessarily going to be a recession, but the recession calls are still going to be around. So you get some slower economic growth, some fears of recession, election uncertainty. That's a choppy market. And so some of the defensive areas, which have lagged so much this year, could, could actually have a little bit of mean reversion the first part of next year. And Peter, I think you see some of those dark clouds gathering. You say a soft landing is highly unlikely um, Lori Calvacina told us yesterday she likes small caps within equities. You seem to be taking the other side, looking at bonds here. Which ones? Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting. When we think about what the market's been doing of late, especially into the end of the year, and I think about December's, I think it's something like 39 out of the past 53 December's have been positive. I don't think that really tells us much, given the window dressing it points to and seasonal factors about what's going to happen next year. I think, you know, look, small small caps were, were potentially interesting a month ago. Uh, they've rallied quite a bit. I think the problem with small caps here, given our, our slowdown recession view, is that they are subject to financing needs um, in a much higher rate environment. And uh, th that's one of the reasons why they haven't come back as they have, um, as they often would uh, into the end of the year. Um, you know, so so I think when we look at small caps, when we look at high yield bonds, for example, you know, spreads are 400 on CX, uh, CDX high yield. With the VIX at 13, last time that happened, CDX high yield was at 300. Um, so small caps, CDX high yield, telling you that storm clouds are on the horizon. You know, our view for next year is uh, that as would be normal after a, a you know a series of hikes as aggressive as what we've seen. Uh, that we're going to see a significant slowdown. Okay, so uh, any sort of sense on what a significant slowdown could actually look like, Peter? And I ask that because we know every economic cycle, every time you do see a recession actually materialize, if that is in fact what happens next year, um, each one is it, it's its own beast. But does it feel like a certain time period that we've seen in the past? I mean, are, are you looking to certain historical templates as how this could actually affect the markets and play out? You know, and it's, it's a great question. And, you know, this time has been somewhat different. And, you know, the long and variable lags and, you know, the Fed tightening have been a bit longer because of the, you know, the knock on effects of, of you know, massive pandemic era stimulus and all the unintended consequences, not just inflation, but, you know, all the excess savings and everything else. So sort of calling how the recession is going to look is difficult, mm -hmm. but there are maturity walls coming up in commercial real estate, a trillion dollars over the next couple of years. High yield maturity walls are also uh, building in 24, 25, and 26. Um, so it could look like a good old fashioned, you know, 2000 ish kind of recession with an element of sort of the 90s uh, credit crunch. Interesting. Um, Ed, I I'm looking at your year end 2024 price target for the SP, it's 4,900, implied upside from here, something like 7%. How do we get here? I would imagine you're not baking recession into your base case with that price target. Uh, that's correct. So slow down the first half of your choppiness, and then as it becomes evident that uh, there isn't going to be a hard landing, then the market can rally toward the back half of next year, and that's where you can get a chunk of, of those gains. Uh, now, look, the recession is not completely off the table, but if you look at, you know, there's been a few cycles where the Fed has actually pulled this off. In the 2018 cycle, the 95 cycle, and back in 1965, they, they were able to do it. And I think the Fed's rhetoric change over the past 
several weeks has been a positive sign for being extremely hawkish to recognize that they've done a lot of work already, and now they can, can see what the effects are, are going to be. And it always, the U.S. economy comes back to the labor market. We could be adding 150,000 jobs a month. It's just very hard to get a, a negative GDP number uh, because consumers, two-thirds of the economy.